and Mr. Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 24th of April, 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to Elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. On the eve of Anzac Day, a day that goes beyond the anniversary of the landing at Gallipoli in 1915, we pay tribute to and remember the 1.5 million Australian men and women who have served in eight major wars or conflicts around the globe. More than 102,760 Australians have died in action, more than 200,000 wounded. On the eve of Anzac Day, we stand in silence of memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Members, can I welcome you please to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber meeting Tuesday the 24th of April, 6.08 p.m. Welcome CEO, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Uh, members, can I take you to item five, which is apologies and leave of absence. Uh, we have Councillor Corbell Moore on leave and we have Councillor Natasha Maloney as an apology for this meeting, otherwise we have a full compliment. Members, the last meeting of Council, item six, was held on the 10th of April 2018 and the minutes of which are contained in your papers. Can I please have a mover of said minutes? Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Martin. Any debate about the minutes or questions, members? No, I put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry those and adopt those minutes from the meeting held on the 10th of April 2018. Members, public forum or deputations, uh, we have nil received. Uh, Councillor Clare Hand is not listed as an apology, so I believe she is attending the meeting as far as I know. CEO, do we know any different? Okay. Must be in transit, Councillor. Members, we have no public forum or deputation requests for this meeting, which is item seven, and neither do we have any petitions, which is item eight. Which takes us directly, members, to item nine, which is advice and recommendations from the Adelaide 
Parklands Authority and other committees. So 9.1 members. You have a report to note, which is APLA advice dated from the 19th of April 2018. Moved by Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Slama. Any debate on that advice or any questions, should I say, members, with regards to that advice to note? There isn't, so I'll put that matter 9.1 before you. Those in favour, those against, we note the advice of APLA. Members, similarly, uh, item 9.2 to note and adopt uh, audit committee held on the 20th of April 2018, page 60 or papers. Members, do I have a mover? Councillor Martin? Do I have a seconder, please, members? Councillor Slama? Any questions or queries, members? In absence of, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We note the advice of the Adelaide City Council Audit Committee from the meeting held on the 20th of April. Members, I will take you directly to the item 10, which is the Lord Mayor's verbal report. And members, it was uh, indeed my great honour to host the Lord Mayor luncheon to, to launch the Duke of Edinburgh International Employer Award Program in South Australia with His Royal Highness the Earl of Wessex as guest of honour in the Queen Adelaide Room in Adelaide Town Hall. Thank you to those members that attended and thank you to those members whose partners attended also. On the evening before, the Lady Mayoress and I attended a reception at Government House to recognise the Duke of Edinburgh's international award on the occasion of the visit of His Royal Highness. The Lady Mayoress and I also attended the 97th anniversary of the Royal Australian Air Force at the Torrance Parade Ground. We attended the History Festival launch event at the Drill Hall and the, the Greek or the Orthodox Easter service at the Cathedral of Archangel Michael and Gabriel on Franklin Street. In partnership with the Local Government Association, I recently hosted the successful Smart City Summit at Adelaide Town Hall with over 100 local government representatives, including mayors, CEOs and professionals. Members, thank you very much for those members that also attended. I also spoke at the opening of the 2018 Council Next Practice Showcase and the LGA Ordinary General Meeting and attended the Metropolitan Local Government Group Executive Committee meeting. And thank you, Councillor Clearahan, for representing your council. I hosted receptions for the Smart City Summit to acknowledge the Australian of the Year, South Australian finalists. Councillor Abiyad, thank you again for your leadership in that space and to celebrate 50 years of the Adelaide Rotary Act Clubs. I also hosted a meeting of mayors and interested parties to view a pilot episode of a potential 12 episode South Australian produced television show, Antiques Walkabout, hosted by international antiques personality Tim Wanacott which focuses on our state's unique history, heritage and antiquities. And again, members, thank you for those that attended. Thank you all for your continued support of the rejuvenation of the 88 O'Connell Street site. The community celebration of the City of Adelaide taking ownership of the site was indeed a great success, attended by many members, and a great start to the exciting new chapter for this dynamic precinct. How's your knee, CEO? <laughs> I met with the Consul General of the Republic of Indonesia in Sydney, uh, from Sydney uh, and also met with Andrew Barr, MLA, who is the Chief Minister of the ACT and a number of members of the New South Australian Cabinet. I visited the Australian Tourism Exchange. We had a tour with Robert Harricks, Chief Executive of the South Australian Tourism Commission. We have a strategic goal to increase our city's residential population. I attended the turning of the SOB ceremony in the East End Apartments on Perry Street, which has pre-solved 70% of the development with most to owner occupiers. And very favourable feedback, I must say, members, with regards to City Council's five-year rate-free program for owner occupiers who buy off the plan. I spoke at the business support program launches in the West End, North Adelaide and the South West, with a session for the South East to be held next week. And thank you to councillors who also attended those sessions. I attended Houndwave, a dog-friendly live music event in Light Square, supported by council through Splash Adelaide, and attended also the Lady Mayor's Golf Day and hosted the Lord Mayor's Golf Day at the North Adelaide Golf Links over the weekend. I also attended the Green Drive Day at the Joinery, hosted by the Australian Electric Vehicle Association, and an which provided an opportunity to test drive currently available and soon to be released to market electric vehicles. I met with the riders of Road Race 2018, a bike ride from Adelaide to Melbourne supporting Canteen uh, for the start of their journey and joined them for the first, it says 10 kilometres, I didn't ride anywhere near 10 kilometres members, I rode to the edge of the parklands. <laughs> they have raised over $200,000 this year, bringing their three year total to half a million dollars. I opened the competition for the Barefoot Water Skiing National Championship 
co-located on the River Torrens, as well as the Adelaide's Virtual Reality Arcade, which is called Untethered, which is a great new business on Goodger Street. The Lady Mayoress accompanied me to many events, including the 2018 History Festival launch, and for those members that attended that event, there were 600 people in the drill hall at the Torrens Parade Ground, and it was a wonderful event, I must say, with a very, very um, positive atmosphere. So I think, please, members, to get out and about and enjoy uh, History Festival this month. Starts 28th of April, goes through the 31st of um, May, and it's a great event with a great calendar of events. As part of the Local Government Association OGM, uh, when the mayors were in Adelaide from Metropolitan Regional South Australia, the Lady Mayoress took a tour of the new Royal, Loyal Adelaide Hospital, which was attended by about some 25 pair, um, mayors, um, partners and mayors. The Lady Mayoress also hosted the 2018 Lady Mayoress's Golf Day at North Adelaide Golf Links, uh, at which I believe was a great success. I'm also shamed almost to say that the Lady Mayoress hit a longer opening tee off than the Lord Mayor. As part of the 2018 History Festival, on Friday 11th of May, the Lady Mayoress will launch a community-built history of the Lady Mayoress's her story for love and duty, celebrating the work of volunteer researchers in telling the stories of former Lady Mayoresses. That'll be held here in Adelaide Town Hall. Now I'd like to invite our CEO, Mark Goldstone, to speak about a to speak about a recent award won by Council. Lord well, Mayor, on Friday the 6th, um, of April, uh, the Local Government Professionals SA um, event, which was um, part of the annual Leadership Excellence Awards um, held at the Entertainment Centre. Um, our City of Adelaide um, Management Challenge Team, which called themselves Smells Like Team Spirit, achieved second place um, out of the 16 teams competing in the State Management Challenge which is another fantastic result for the City of Adelaide, uh, for the team members, for the mentors and the support crew. We also had two staff members who participated in a composite team uh, with Victor Harbour and Yankee Water Councils. Um, that's the first time ever that there's been a metro and regional team compete together. So um, that was a, a very uh, good thing to see and an indication of our collaboration with the local government sector. But I'm also pleased to say that we won the award for the excellence in local government economic development uh, category for our economic insights dashboard board project. And therefore, I'm really pleased to, uh, to present it to you tonight in further recognition of our achievements and the outstanding performance of our staff. Thank you, Lord Mayor. CEO, congratulations to you and your team. Uh, here is the award. I think that deserves a round of applause. Members, can I please have a member move that that report be adopted? Councillor Hander, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. All those in favour? Those against? We carry the Lord Mayor's report. Members, item 11.1, which is a report from council members. Um, members, would any councillor like to speak to his or her report? No, so can I have a mover as well? Lord Mayor, can I mention briefly um, some of the results of our motions of GLGA next practice? Yes, you can. Is that appropriate? Yes, of course it is. You can speak to that matter now if you wish. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, last week, I think it was, it seems such a long time ago, um, I attended Council Next Practice um, Local Government Association Ordinary General Meeting and Council had four motions that it put to the meeting on the Friday um, and I'm pleased to say that of those uh, four motions, one was in relation to um, the LGA uh, working with councils to adopt the South Australian Industry Participation Framework as part of its policy, uh, i.e. in supporting local businesses. Um, and uh, that actually uh, got up um, and I think our concern was that it was a framework but it hadn't been incorporated into policy of all councils and we felt that it was worthy of a push and we succeeded and, that, and of course Adelaide already has adopted a policy back in December last year. We also had a motion up in relation to um, the LGA working with other councils um, to develop an appropriate and consistent 
policy and procedure on um, bike share schemes, given that there are quite a number of councils now across the metropolitan area, and I understand even in some country areas that are uh, used by that uh, have bike share schemes. Uh, and that motion also got up and was endorsed by the general meeting. Unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to um, encourage support for a similar motion related to um, procedures and policy in relation to the, uh, the car share um, policies. Uh, however, I think we've got time given I don't know that any many councils actually have car share schemes uh, in operation around South Australia. Uh, I think that's another one we can tackle later when it's a bit more relevant to more councils than just Adelaide. Uh, the other one was in relation to um, our uh, heritage policy. Um, and it was one that Councillor Wilkinson put to council and received endorsement for to take to the Local Government Association general meeting. And that was basically looking at the opportunity um, for the LGA to work with councils across the state to develop again um, a united and cohesive approach to heritage listing of properties. And, um, I can absolutely say with delight that we scraped in by a few votes. So uh, that is another motion that has been endorsed by uh, the Local Government Association General Meeting. And uh, I look forward to, to work um, that will be undertaken in future to address that. It won't be easy, but it's certainly very worthwhile and timely. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, Councillor Claire Hand, thank you again for representing your council with that LGA matter at the OGM. Councillor Hinder. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd also like to make a verbal report that I'd like to make my own confidence. Um, I want to provide an ACMA board member update um, in confidence and do that pursuant to section 93G of the Local Government Act. I've got the permission of the board to speak to council. But I'm okay, well, Councillor Hendo, I won't deal with that matter now, just in the interest of the meeting. What I will do, uh, with your permission, is that I'll deal with that as the first item, the first confidential item of which we have several to deal with later in this meeting. So if we could park that matter for now, I'll bring that back onto the agenda when we move into confidence. Thank you, Councillor Hendo. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, just verbally reporting about the Historic Houses Conference in Sydney. Um, the, uh, uh, this was the inaugural Historic Houses Conference um, held um, in, in Sydney, New South Wales. And um, in the course of that three-day um, uh, event, we saw some uh, extraordinary properties, a house in Sydney designed by Walter Werner Griffith, who uh, designed um, uh, uh, Canberra and um, uh, MacArthur's residence, um, a property called the Abbey in Leichhardt, which the owners have spent, um, I would guess, probably $10 million for the amount of employment that they would generate in restoring this building from a ruin to uh, a $20 million property. Um, it's quite extraordinary to imagine the employment that that would have generated and that was fairly evident with all of the uh, works on these buildings that it was uh, an employment generating um, activity. Um, and uh, uh, the, uh, the conference had some very interesting uh, insights from various speakers, I found it absolutely fascinating. But also, whilst I was in Sydney for that time, I had an opportunity just to uh, walk around the Sydney CBD um, looking at the way and speaking to some of the people involved in Sydney planning and Sydney heritage matters. And what's very interesting walking around Sydney is how they have, uh, whilst not in the 60s and 70s, but in the 80s, 90s and since, have actually retained and restored their historic buildings. And unlike what we're seeing in Adelaide these days, the buildings are being retained and the tall Tall, you know, their buildings are very tall, but they, the tall elements of buildings are consistently set back, and um, and they have plot ratio where we have no plot ratio. We banned it in two thousand and seven, and they have transferable floor areas, so heritage listed buildings are able to sell their, their 
um, used for area to other property owners. And it has worked in Sydney because unlike Adelaide, they had um, uh, only one way of getting the additional floor area, and that's by buying it from a heritage site. You couldn't put a sculpture in a foyer or have a pedestrian link or do some other, or a green wall or have some other way of, a cheaper way of getting it. So it has been very effective. It's reliant on having plot ratio and they've obviously been able to negotiate some fantastic outcomes. Even the curved Harry Sadler building, which people know, you know, has actually retained historic buildings on that site. Um, and uh, uh, signage, uh, all of the hanging signs are 300 millimetres high. They're not, they're not all over the place like we have in Adelaide. They've got a strict limit that each sign is 1.8 by 300, so every business is signed is the same size. And then McDonald's signage looks good and is incorporated within an old building. And um, uh, uh, hotel chains and student apartment buildings that we chains that we see in Adelaide in the new buildings where the council will need them, you to wrap uh, it up soon and shortly um, have been done incorporating and integrated with old buildings. So it just shows how, how well it can be done and we are ought to be really looking at Sydney uh, for some some uh, for some guidance on how we deal with our planning and heritage matters. Councillor thank you we look forward to all learning more about that trip. It sounds like it was very productive. Uh, members, no further members wish to speak to their reports. So I have item 11.1. Can I have a mover, please, members? Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Moran. I'll put that straight for the vote. Those in favour? Those against? We carry 11.1. Members, I'll take us directly to 12.1, which is a report regarding traffic congestion in the city. It's a report to note. Moved by Councillor Antic, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Andrew, do you wish to speak to the matter? Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to the matter? No. Members, I look to you. Councillor Kerrihan. Lord Mayor, I noticed from an attachment, and I'm just attempting to find it, that the traffic in O'Connell Street, which was last declared at 23,000 vehicles a day, has now gone up to 33. Um, could we have some commentary from administration as to whether this is likely to stay at that level or whether it's um, just temporary. Certainly, Councillor Clarion. Can I refer that to the CEO, please? Daniel, could you help us answer that, thanks? Uh, through the presiding member, that's actually from the 2016 Traffic Council we've undertaken on O'Connell Street. So, 2016 Traffic Council changed from the 23,000 we were taken, I think, in 2011 to the last census uh, count and, and an associated traffic counts to 30, about 30,000. So there has been an increase in traffic on O'Connell Street in that five years. Um, I'm just wondering whether the administration has any explanation given the numbers in other streets don't appear, well, don't appear to me to have increased to that degree. Daniel, I might uh, ask our senior transport planner, Hugh Gallagher, to answer that question. Um, well, we need to look into the exact factors um, more closely. Um, there is the potential that the increases in O'Connell Street could be due to traffic works that were carried out elsewhere and um, diverting more traffic towards O'Connell Street. Um, also factors outside of the um, City of Adelaide area um, that may be encouraging more traffic on, um, on those through routes. Um, we can look into it more closely, if desired. Thank you, I'd like to. Thank you. I'd imagine also, <laughs> Councillor, that the growth of the northern suburbs too, over that period, would just be driving more traffic into the city. It'd be logical to assume. So, Thank you. Uh, thank you, CEO. And CEO, would you like to speak to this matter? Yeah, through you, Lord I'd like to ask Beth to say a few words. <coughs> Thank you, CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor. I think, Lord Mayor, the report, as we said, is, is self-explanatory. I guess a couple of comments I'd like to make is we have been working on traffic congestion in the city for some time. Um, it's an ongoing aim of ours to ensure that the City of Adelaide is both permeable and easy to move around. Um, we work in partnership, as the report outlines, and. Um, and I think Daniel's outlined with both the state government and SAPOL. And um, 
we really work to use emerging technologies wherever we can um, to give us the best possible decision making and recommendations in the management of our traffic flows. Um, so this particular report, Lord Mayor, was in response, as you noted earlier, to um, a motion on notice that was raised by Councillor Antic. Um, we brought that forward in response to that. I'd also underline that it's one of our core responsibilities and business as usual to manage traffic flows the best we can throughout the city. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Members, Councillor Hinder. Lord Mayor, I'd like to uh, move an amendment, if I may, um, if, and if I can get a second, and I'm doing this sort of off the top of my head so people could listen carefully and see if they're up for it. Um, it's as printed, one and two as printed, but to include a new paragraph three, uh, request administration to A, work with DIPTI and other relevant authorities to improve bus stop signage in the city and B, approach the new state government about the strengthening of the city ring route. Um, if someone was willing to second that, thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, I know these, both these things ha have been mentioned in the report, and first I should start by saying thank you for the report and for the work, that, the ongoing work that I know you're doing. But there were two issues that, that came out of that report for me of, of, a men, of many, many issues. One is um, the, I think, significant problem we've had for many, many years of, of um, poor bus stop signage in the city. Um, I think if you actually know which bus you're supposed to get on, it's easy. But if you're someone looking to try and find how do I get to Mobbury, it's almost impossible to understand it just from reading the city signage. Um, I think there's a, um, some simple work that could be done there which would uh, transform that and make buses much more user friendly for city for city workers and for city visitors and for tourists as well. Um, and the other is the strengthening of the city ring route. We've talked about the city ring route for a very long time, um, but no one actually even knows there is a city ring route. It's certainly not signposted very well. It has gaps in it um, and we still have people who choose driving straight through the centre of the city as their best and fastest option, particularly from north to south, and um, that has an impact on the on the um, uh, congestion in the city. So all I'm asking is that we just bring those two items a bit higher up the agenda and, and approach the state government about them, both given we've got a new state government, we've got new people in charge of some of the departments, and we just might refresh their memories about these issues and, and bring them to their attention. Councillor Hand, I'll just have you look at the wording which has been captured. Does that reflect accurately your proposed amendment? It does? Okay, your second there was Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to the amendment? Uh, yes, Lord Mayor, just to thank Councillor Hender for the amendment. Uh, in uh, speaking on the side here to uh, Councillor Clearahan, uh, we both understand that traffic has increased enormously, uh, enormously through thoroughfares like O'Connell Street and I think there's a suspicion that it is because of the absence of clear signage and direction to people on how to get around the city rather than going through it. So this amendment is timely. Uh, and the other matter she raises I think is also significant and that is that we ought to be doing all we can to encourage people to use public transport more than they are at present. The Australian Bureau of Statistics tell us that Adelaide is the most car intensive city in Australia. That is to say, more people take their car to work in Adelaide than in any other Australian city. And conversely, um, fewer people uh, uh, take public transport in Adelaide than most other Australian cities. So all that can be done to encourage the use of public transport, to encourage cycling, to encourage pedestrians, uh, will help this city in dealing with the congestion that's to come. Thank you, Councillor Martin. CEO, uh, before I hand you to Councillor Antic, which I will, Councillor, uh, CEO just wanted to make a comment. Yes, three of all, just to remind Council, there is a previous resolution of Council um, seeking a ring route report to be tabled. Um, that is intended to occur in June. This amendment would be 
fitting well with the intent of that. So just, just letting you know that's on the cards. Thank you, CEO. Councillor Antti. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I won't support this. It's not going to be clear because I agree with everything that Councillor Hender has said in a sense, um, but mainly because this is a separate motion. Um, I don't see why this is tacked onto a motion to note a report. And I would, uh, I would make the observation that this is a, a motion which is better taken in isolation rather than tacking onto the end of this current one. Um, the second reason is I've never really understood the city ring route. Um, and I've never really understood the logic of trying to get people to not come into the city by motor vehicle. Uh, we have a, a range of uh, businesses in the city which I think uh, rely on uh, motor vehicle traffic and the intent of the original motion was not to discourage people from coming into the city but indeed encourage them to do so in a, in a more orderly fashion. So I think the report does that. It's got a lot of good points in there and I like the concept of using technology to try and increase the traffic flow, but but certainly, and I don't understand what is meant by the term strengthening the city ring route. Are we re resurfacing it or are we, um, you know, putting up some more signs or so? I won't support it, uh, but I mean, I, I don't necessarily take a particular issue with anything that's put there, but um, I, I just think it's a better uh, matter left in isolation. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, members, I have accepted this as an amendment. The, so the topic subject matter is consistent with one another on that basis that I have, but point taken, Councillor. Uh, members, I might just ask a question before I hand to Councillor uh, Aviad if I can. Um, CEO, I understand that some 12 months ago now, I think if my memory serves me correctly, there was, in answer to um, Councillor Hender's comments with regards to improving the signage of bus stops, I think there was a project done possibly by the state government at that time to improve the signage of the bus stops and the presentation of the bus stops along the Grenfell Curry Street corridor. Um, could we have an update on that if that's available, please? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, through the Chair, um, there was a project of the state government to improve signage on Grenfell Curry Street which looked at uh, rationalising the stop so the signage was improved. They actually used the basis of the City of Adelaide wayfinding strategy for that signage strategy. So if you walk along Grenfell Curry, you'll see the signage is very, very uh, complementary to our strategy. But at the same time, they also rationalised and made it very clear that the buses were going to the hills or to the east or to the north or to the, to the O-Barn. Um, and we continue to monitor uh, the success of that initiative. And that was an initiative of the state government. So Daniel, in closing, has that project now been completed? The upgrade of the bus stop signage itself has been and the rationalisation of the bus stops um, along Renfrew Curry, yes, it has. Thank you, Daniel. Councillor Avia. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I again agree with the um, with noting the report. I've got a couple of, I guess, concerns just with the request of the administration. I mean, I've, I've downloaded the bus app when I needed to use it, and it's not just about improving signage, it's more of an education process to see people taking a bus. Yes, in some instances it might be a signage issue, but then some people don't know about the application, they don't know about the web uh, presence of assisting them. Some of the stuff comes in live on the application. So it's not, for me, I feel like it's a very micro management approach to dealing with the issue of getting people to catch buses. Um, it's not just about signage, I think there's a lot more than that. So that needs to be considered. So potential variation would be work with Dipsy and other relevant authority to improve um, transport information. Yeah, public transport really information. Public transport information. Just train, trams, uh, buses. Yeah, so to, to improve uh, you know public transport information in the city. And I think that's where for me it would be the main focus. So, or maybe you want to deal with that first, and then I've got another comment. Okay, if you just look to the screen to ensure that the word's been captured accurately, then I'm going to look to the mover of the amendment, which is Councillor Hender uh, for yeah. comfort. Yes, Councillor Martin, you're the seconder. You're, comfort, you're comfortable with this proposed variation? Okay, I'll look to the floor for comfort with that variation. The majority is there. Councillor Abbey, back to you. The second one, I'm, I'm quite mindful. I, I mean, look, I think on any given day, if you take the ring route, it's actually much longer than going through the city um, on any given time. The ones that even know what the ring route is, um, unless you're talking about the 7.30 to 9 o'clock traffic and the potential 4.30 to 5.30 traffic, when that is when the city's congested <laughs> uh, to some degree, people that are coming in and out. But look, to Councillor Antic's point, 
when cars do drive past streets, um, they might not be going into the city to specifically shop at a shop or connect to a business, but they will recognise signage, they'll become familiar with areas. So in a city our size, maybe potentially there's an education piece around peak time on how we manage wing routes, etc. But during the day, I much prefer people going through the cities in their cars, even if they're getting to the other side of town. Uh, where they can be exposed to city businesses and city services, where in the back of their mind they can think, you know, let's Google this later, or I like to look at this florist, or I like to look at that cafe, I might come in and try it later. Um, so I don't want to completely go down the line of discouraging. I think the approach um, about strengthening the city ring route has a case, but it has a case when we're congested. And I would argue that we are congested as a city, maybe four hours a day. Um, around that time and any other given time during the day between 9.30 in the morning to you know, 4 o'clock, we're not really busy uh, and cars are welcome, other modes of transport are welcome to be able to drive through the city and experience our city businesses and other aspects that the city's got to offer. And I would also argue that it's a lot quicker to go through the city off peak than it is to go through the ring route. So it's just a point I want to I want to make. I don't completely oppose it, but I think we need to look at it closely. Thank you, Councillor Abia. So, members, we are debating a proposed amendment by Councillor Hender. Do I have any further debate on the proposed amendment? I don't see any hands, so I go back to the mover of the proposed amendment, Councillor Hender. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just to address some of the issues that have been raised. Um, firstly, I think it is it's um, I think it's a, it is appropriate that this be mentioned as part of this. Motion. The motion, uh, the report includes a number of things and calls out just two things and says here are two things that we're doing. We're doing CCTV and we're doing Bluetooth. It mentions the other things but then doesn't actually indicate what is happening in relation to them. And I'm asking that something be happening, something happen in relation to public transport communication and that something happens in relation to the ring, both of which are discussed fully in the report. So we're just pulling them out and saying, okay, there are two more things that have come from the report that I'd like highlighted. Um, in relation to um, the ring route and the, and the strengthening of the ring route, just so the administration understands what I'm talking about, the ring route has been designed not to stop people who are actually just wanting to um, come into the city. I mean, obviously we want to attract people into the city, but I've seen at times quite substantial trucks driving down King William Street, transport trucks driving straight through the centre of the city and presumably also going straight through O'Connell Street out to Prospect and off to Winfield. I don't know where they're heading, but um, they are using our city as the main thoroughfare from north to south. Um, they have no intention of stopping. They are transport trucks. Um, and it's those sort of vehicles, those sort of heavier vehicles or people who are just trying to get straight through the city that we're trying to, um, we're trying to encourage to use a different route. Um, the, uh, our smart city, our smart, what's it called, our smart transport plan, smart moves transport plan has, has referred to this, um, it's, it's, long stand, it's a long standing ambition of the city that, that this be strengthened. By strengthen I mean there is actually a part of it to the west which isn't really properly identified as even being part of the ring route, so it's not a full ring yet, um, and other parts that are not marked or indicated that actually there is another way around and if you can get onto Grenfell Street and then get onto the Terrace and get around that way, you can actually skirt around the city. And um, strengthening, I think, also looks at how we can make that route quicker and perhaps only at certain times of the, uh, the um, day to take up Councillor Abiad's point, we can make that alternative route quicker. So it's about letting people know that there is an alternative route available to them and making that alternative route more practical for them to use so that we clear our city out for the people who actually want to come in to shop, to work, to play, to do the things that matter for us. So that's my intention for it. It's just to really to ask, the ask our administration to bring those two things back up to a head. They've always been out part of our ambition, just to bring them back to a head and to address them with the new government. Thank you, Councillor Hender. I put the proposed amendment for you. Those in favour? Those against? The proposed amendment is now carried. It becomes part of the substantive motion. Members, do I have any further debate on the motion as amended? I don't, so I go back to Councillor Andy to sum up. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just didn't realise I've got the microphone, that's great. Um, yes, look, I'm a fan of evidence-based approaches, so I like that. But uh, um, look, uh, great report, um, and uh, I think there's some good work in there. Uh, in terms of the CCTV 
Uh, I, we're now taking the entire motion as one, I think, aren't we? So, as amended, that's correct. As amended, right, okay, well. Yeah, well, actually, I would ask to take it in parts. As a second item. Okay. You want to take section one, two, and three in parts, or do you want to take one and two together and three as a separate yeah, part? One, two, together, it's fine. No, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm happy with that. All right, I will accept that. So, no further debate. So, members, you are now voting upon section one and section two of the said motion. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. We are now voting on section three of the said motion. Those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Members, thank you. That concludes item 12.1 on your agenda. Members, I now take you to item 12.2, which is delegations under the Expiation of Offences Act 1996 and Fines and Enforcement and Debt Recovery Act 2017. It's page 18 on your papers. You have a recommendation to approve. I look to the floor. Moved by Councillor Moran as printed. Do I have a second, of those members? Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Rand, do you wish to speak to this matter? No, thank you. DLM? No. Members, I'm looking to the floor. No. Councillor Rand, back to you to sum up. No. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.2. Members, item 12.3 is the 2018-2019 Draft Integrated Business Plan for Public Consultation. The note to endorse and to authorise page 25. Members, I look to you. Councillor Wilkinson, you are moving as printed. Thank you. Do I have a second? Councillor Martin. Councillor Wilkinson, do you wish to speak to the matter? Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to the matter? Members, I look to you. Any debate? Oh, yeah, just a question. Councillor Claren, of course. Um, I noted that there was $20,000 allocated to membership of Together SA, and I'd just like to understand what Together SA is. I don't know of this organisation. Something to do with South Africa. See you. Yeah, clear, thank you. Could you help us? Uh, through the presiding member, and um, we've partnered with Together SA to deliver our health and wellbeing um, project, um, which came through council a year or so ago. Um, and uh, they're the team that's uh, working with our um, community to um, respond to the survey work that we did to understand the wellbeing of our residential population. But I'm happy to provide more further detail after session. Thank you. I'm Thank you, Councillor Clear and Councillor Rabia. You are take general item twelve point three, the budget, correct, Lord Mayor? Uh, that is correct. Yes. For public consultation purposes. That is correct. Yes. Yes. Um, As, more, um, yep. Lord Mayor, I'm happy to support. I, I think there's been a significant amount of work that's gone through in getting uh, this to where it needs to go uh, as a budget. And I support it for public consultation purposes. I just want to flag to the council that I will be actively engaging with our constituents through this budget process to take into account some of their concerns or some aspects of expenditure that they may want to see or not see as part of this budget process. Um, some of the things that we need to consider that I think haven't been considered in this budget and maybe of, uh, of some concern would be some of the work that we may need to do around Hut Street recovery to support businesses, residents, etc. Um, to start taking the street to where it's been publicised to the next level and try to give them a bit of a push and, uh, and support over the specific year. Um, there's also a bit of a focus on potentially Highland Street and also uh, the East End Lord Mayor uh, from a street activation, greening, potential street closures, other things that may need to be considered. And I'm hoping that through this budget uh, process consultation we're able to pick up some of that information from our, uh, from our uh, constituents and feed it back to the process. Uh, another thing that I'm uh, very passionate about and I've been supporting for a long time is the complete abolishment of any outdoor dining fees. 
that need to be considered. And it's something that I'd also would like to see you all to be at least considered by uh, this budget process at some stage. But like I said, Lord Mayor, I'm just sort of putting some of those aspects on notice. Uh, but uh, I'm mindful that once this goes to a consultation process, there'll be an opportunity for our ratepayers to reply to the budget um, and to, uh, I guess, put forth to council things for us to consider at a later stage. Uh, but thank you for the administration for giving us the time and for really making the process very easy. I think this was a very easy budget to take on board. Um, and look, I really thank you for all your efforts. Thank you, Councillor Abbiad. Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, look, I'm disappointed that uh, Councillor Abbiad should be raising these substantial budget measures such as outdoor dining when he didn't attend much of the budget process. In fact, only I did attend, Lord Mayor. I, I only 50% like of the meetings, like Lord Mayor. Rectify. And it would be and ideal the budget members. I'm across the budget, Lord Mayor. I'm, I'm no dumb. I know the budget back to front. I've been in this council for eight years. I've got more experience than the person speaking right now with budgets. I've chaired budgets for four years, six years actually. Thank you, Councillor Abia. Now, Councillor Martin, you, oh, have, sorry, you have Can you provide me some guidance here? It, how does it work when you stand up and speak, somebody else speaks and just continues? Councillor Martin, are you speaking with regards to the budget? What yes, I yes. am. I'm disappointed that uh, a major budget initiative such as uh, dropping outdoor dining fees wasn't disclosed during the course of the budget process. And moreover, I thought during the budget process we discussed pet projects such as those associated with the East End. Um, and frankly, I was, uh, wasn't was going to do it. But look, we can deal with all of those issues post public consultation if Councillor Abbott wishes. And I'd like to say to him that one of those measures is concerning the Vogue Festival in Rundle Street which is a, a project no doubt close to Councillor Abbott's heart, where $65,000 of ratepayers' money is being devoted to a 24-hour fashion parade, $30,000 of which is going to Vogue Australia. As well, Councillor, can I, can I just intervene there, please? That, that may well be speculation. I, I have no idea, and you may have no idea how Councillor no, Abbott feels about the Vogue Festival either, but there, we'll please continue. Yeah. So, look, you know, it, it would be good if we could have these discussions prior to going out to public consultation. So at least our ratepayers are aware of the issues that are going to be um, raised post-consultation. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, do I have any further comments before I hand back to Councillor Wilkinson to sum up on the motion? Can I also echo, please? Uh, CEO, yourself and your directors and your team, and Alex Brown and the team, I think have done an exceptional job on this budget, uh, like I shared in one of the budget sessions, um, is that over the last three years, and our members, I'm sure you would echo this sentiment, that this process has become uh, progressively more streamlined, <coughs> informed, and we're able to make better decisions on behalf of our community, so we thank you. Councillor Clarahan, you'd like to make a comment? Yes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, the, the budget process was really well done. I think, you know, it was probably the least painful um, series of meetings I've ever had in my time in council in terms of the way the information was presented. There was a huge amount of preparation and there was also ample time for members to contribute to the discussion. Which leads me to my point, really, and that is about participatory budget making in terms of the public and our ratepayers, residents, business people. I know that there is absolutely no public meeting where people can ask questions or receive information in relation to our budget. It is all online and there really isn't an opportunity until the council, special council meeting at which um, people can come and make presentations which is fine, but I think I've mentioned before that many councils are actually looking at ways of engaging more um, with their ratepayers and businesses and residents. I'm not sure what the catch cry is of participatory budget making, and I think that it would be really good if we can look to ways of actually involving more interaction and discussion in terms of our deliberations with the budget, both in the provision of information uh, and also in providing, allowing informed comment rather than people just being able to comment based on what they see. 
I'm happy to put that in a motion um, further down the track, but um, certainly I thank, thank our administration for the amazing amount of work that's been undertaken with the elected members. It's been fantastic. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wilkinson, to sum up <coughs> members to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? We have carried item 12.3. Members, that takes us directly on to 12.4, which is progress of motions by elected members, page 84. It is a report to note. I have a mover, Councillor Abiyad. Uh, seconder, please. Councillor Slama. Any commentary, members? I'll put this matter straight before you. Those in favour? Those against? Sorry, members, I'm going to do that again. Item 12.4, progress of motions by elected members. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.4. Thank you, members. Members, item 12.5 is a report to note. Helipad Independent Review, page 87. I have a mover, Councillor Moran. Do I have a seconder, please, members? Deputy Lord Mayor. Do I have any debate, members? Or do I have any questions? It's a report to note. You have a question, Councillor Martin? Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Um, at 13.2b, there is mention of a separate and entirely different internal review of the process conducted uh, by another, uh, Deloitte, whose recommendations, it says, will be implemented. No further information of substance is provided. What are the specific recommendations and will the report be made available to elected members? CEO, can I refer that matter to you, please? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. When this matter was first being debated by Council, um, as in the resolution of council, I advised that I had already initiated an internal process review to be undertaken by Deloitte's. Um, that process review has been undertaken, um, considered, and the recommendations are being implemented. I considered at the time that to be an operational report and an operational matter, so I hadn't intended to provide it to council because I didn't see the need to. I don't have a problem providing it to you, and if that's your instruction, I'm happy to do so, but it's just an operational process improvement document that, um, that we're working on. Thank you. Members, do I have any further debate? Councillor Abiyad? Just a question. What's the cost? What was the cost of this report, Council? Uh, CEO? Through Lord Mayor. Uh, Lord Mayor, I understand it's um, in the order of $30,000. Thirty thousand mm -hmm. for this report, and this report was initiated uh, post the Deloitte review report, which was instigated by UCF. Uh, yeah, three or maybe yes. Um, the the Deloitte report was was an organised and arranged prior to this resolution of council, um, but they happened concurrently. Excellent. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Moran, summing up. Members, I put this matter before you to note. Those in favour? Those against? Passed, as noted. Division law, those members, Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Abiyad, Councillor Hender, Councillor Slama, Councillor Antic, Councillor Clarehan, Deputy Lord Mayor, and Councillor Moran. Question carried, members. Members, emerging key risks of which there are nil on this report. Item 13, questions on notice, none received. Members, I take you to item 14, questions without notice. Do we have any? Councillor Rabiot? It's okay. I'll, I'll wait those out. No further questions without notice. Councillor Martin. Well, Lord Mayor, I wonder if I could ask the administration when it plans to withdraw the ratepayer funded security guard placed in Beachy Cafe in Hutt Street. Refer that matter to the CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor. At this stage, it's intended to continue. Um, there is a meeting of the working group proposed for this Thursday. Um, I think um, as a result of that meeting, which I'll be attending, um, I'll, I'll determine whether it's appropriate to continue or otherwise. Um, so it's really just a matter of, of wait to see how things pan out. Fundamentally, we've got to ensure that the safety of the um, business owner is maintained 
until other measures are in place, such as, for example, the installation of the CCTV cameras could be another decision point as well. So I'm not able to give a, a direct response. It's a matter of wait to see how things pan out over the foreseeable future. And Lord Mayor, is the administration able to provide information about the number of incidents the security guard has reported to police in the almost two weeks since ratepayers have been paying for the guard? See ya. Three Lord Mayor, no, look, I'd need to take that on notice. Um, I believe it's a, uh, appropriate for me to report to Council in due course the outcome of this init uh, initiative. Um, so that Council can consider future such issues as well. So I'll be providing you with a round-out report. Members, do I have any further questions without notice? I don't, so I'm going to move you on to motions on notice, which is item 15 on your agendas. We have one motion on notice, item 15.1, from Councillor Antic, motion on notice regarding precinct safety and surveillance, page 110. Councillor? You Lord Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Let's read that short. I move that um, Council prepares a report in relation to the establishment of a scheme to employ a team of precinct safety and surveillance officers, which is my uh, attempt to categorise them, whose mandate will be broadly to observe and report signs of antisocial and criminal behaviour to the relevant authorities. But before I, uh, and I'll look for a second. <coughs> Members, Councillor Slama. Before I address that, Lord Mayor, I, I just wonder if I can ask a question. Um, of administration, and that is um, the question is wh whether or not there has previously been um, a similar scheme uh, from council in, in recent history, a similar scheme to, to the one proposed the report we just. Okay, um, CEO, so yeah, the uh, elected uh, council antics calling upon a report is asking whether there's similar arrangements in place elsewhere. I could just refer that to Claire Moffa, thanks. Uh, um, through the presiding member, we have had uh, staff in the past called uh, city precinct officers, and some members may remember um, that those staff um, entitled CPOs, city precinct officers, whose role um, it is uh, to go out and um, ensure that the compliance with council's bylaws um, are upheld. Um, that uh, work group was uh, renamed recently to city safety officers. So um, that the role hasn't changed uh, dramatically, but the uh, job title um, was changed. Thank you. So, so that is effectively a scheme whereby uh, council staff um, circulate with respect to issues of bylaws and you know, whatever it may be. But I think this motion is, is fairly self-evident, Lord Mayor. I don't propose to speak to it for any length of time, except to say that um, this concept uh, arose through a discussion uh, of, uh, of a meeting, through a discussions during a meeting with um, uh, ratepayers in the East End, uh, where there was concern about the number of times that those businesses were spending uh, ringing police and ringing police on behalf of you know, um, uh, their, their tenancies, etc. Um, so, what, I, what I'm proposing here is simply almost, if you like, um, a series of people, and of course, the numbers and the amount and the mandate uh, is up for. Uh, uh, for the report, but, but essentially what, what it is looking for is, is an early warning system uh, and some sort of uh, a provision whereby people are not certainly not intended to become involved in any incidents, but simply to be almost um, eyes, eyes on the ground, if you like, uh, to, to report any signs of uh, potential trouble, be it, uh, um, be it uh, antisocial behaviour or criminal or whatever it may be. So uh, I think it's quite a reasonable approach to take. Uh, it's, it's not envisaged that it would be an enormous team, it may only be a few, and their um, precincts in which they would monitor uh, may well be uh, you know, five or six of them around the city, who knows? So that's open for discussion, but uh, it's certainly a concept that I thought we could elaborate on and broaden, and, and something which I thought would be worth, uh, worth uh, doing to try and take some of the burden off of our ratepayers who are otherwise uh, otherwise should be getting on with uh, doing the, that which what they're there for, which is doing their business. So, um, it's in sport. Thank you, Councillor Antic. Councillor Slava, are you seconded the motion? Okay, reserve my right. Reserve the right. Councillor Moran, you had your hand up. I actually reserve my right. Councillor Hender. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And I support the motion. Um, I always support motions where people are calling for reports, particularly when that report is in relation to uh, and, re and response to a, um, residents' concerns or a, um, 
the East End in this case concerns. A couple of comments I'd like to make. I mean, I, I didn't know, for example, that our, our um, CPOs have recently been re renamed City Safety Officers. So we've obviously got some people who are already doing this job, which will be covered in the report. I really appreciate that. I also um, wonder whether there are other um, staff members who are out there already on the streets who, who probably also, to some extent, um, address these issues. We've got people doing parking inspections and we've got people doing um, city beautification and, um, and perhaps there might be an opportunity to remind people who are already, other staff members who are already out and about that they, this could also be part of their role or perhaps even in, included in their job description as part of the, a part of the issue. I think from, from my point of view it would be helpful to be able to say to um, ratepayers who have got concerns, we've already got some people on the street who are attending to some of these issues and, um, and here are some numbers you can read, more places you can go if you need support because you've got some concerns. So I think it's definitely worth getting the report. I, I personally have some concerns about us stepping into the policing role, but I understand that's not what Councillor Antic is suggesting. Um, and I think it's about perhaps using existing staff to, to play that, that um, eyes and ears on the street role um, so that then they can call in the real people who are obviously the state police force if there are any issues. Thank you, Councillor Hinder. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I guess uh, in terms of, the, I'm happy to support the uh, motion on notice. Um, the city safety officers basically are there uh, around our legislative requirements, um, but they have for a very long time been eyes and ears on the ground and they are out and about. Um, and I know there have been many instances probably from the previous month, but many instances where they have uh, either reported or facilitated um, help on the ground uh, to city residents and businesses as well. Um, I'm also very happy that administration's comment includes developing a policy position on city safety because I think one of the conversations that we need to have as a council is actually our policy position and from there we can actually decide what sort of activity that we want our employees uh, to be doing um, and what resourcing needs to go into it. So I um, support the motion. Thank you, DLM. Councillor Slammer, you reserved your right. Would you like to speak to the matter now? I would like to in support and further to the previous two speakers' points. I'd, I'd like to understand out of this report, Lord Mayor, how, how this could underpin the city growth agenda as well. Safety is one thing and retaining businesses in our city is absolutely critical. Uh, as well as it is to attract new businesses into the city. And if safety is a concern, then the ears and eyes on the ground should be um, should almost have simultaneous roles. So there could be people that are picking up on issues and reporting back to under our economic development area and the growth area. So these, these are things that need addressing in order to keep these businesses alive and safe in the city. So I'd love to see a little bit of economic development flavour in the report if we could as well. Thank you, Councillor Slava. Councillor Clarehan, you had your hand up. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. First, I'm, I'm happy to support the report, um, but I'd just like to ask, when was our city safety strategy last reviewed? See ya. Thanks, Claire. Um, I think it was endorsed in 2014. It's currently under review now, so it's timely to incorporate any additional thinking and requirements. Um, such as you know this initiative. Great. So that would also provide the opportunity to take on board some of the issues that are, have arisen of late in Hutt Street and the working party when they get together to discuss the issues. Um, there's an opportunity to have to um, see if there are learnings from that in terms of how we can address safety issues. Um, as well as look at best practice elsewhere, especially in capital cities. Yeah, good. So look, happy to support this. Um, I think um, we need to be very careful, however, that we don't give the message to people that are in the city, that are visiting the city, doing business in the city, living in the city, studying in the city, that they then lose responsibility for reporting or following up on, on um, inappropriate um, activity and behaviours. I think we still need to ensure that the message out there is that we're all responsible, that we don't just hand responsibility over to police or to um, safety officers. I think it's really important that we keep 
providing or sending, you know, spreading that message that everybody is responsible. Um, and with the police, you know, they can't be everywhere all the time and they're often not in the right place at the right time. So we need to look at how, how any um, safety officers would be, um, would be used. My understanding is that we have, you know, 820 people on staff at the City of Adelaide who are all, who all accept a responsibility for responding to issues, reporting them, calling police, etc. Uh, as well as those people who deal with our traffic um, expiations. We've got lots of feet on the street. Um, and so, you know, my only concern in all of this is that it's too generalised and not specific um, or evidence-based to specific issues. Um, and uh, the other thing is, of course, it's that whole thing around cost shifting. Suddenly it's local government's responsibility to provide um, officers on the street instead of state government providing um, adequate policing. Members, before I hand this matter back to the mover, Councillor Antic, um, from lived experience members as a former general manager of the Rundamore Management Authority from 2010 to 2013, uh, Council Brennan at that point in time, I understand, probably still does a very active program at that point. At that point they were called uh, CPOs, now CSOs. But the smooth management of a retail precinct and a main street in many ways like Rundle Mall, um, the presence of CPOs in that precinct was absolutely essential, I must say, to its smooth running. Yes, they play a regulatory role. Um, from around literally everything from A-frames to littering to a whole range of things but they do play a passive security role and they played it extremely well and it was uh, in, in that capacity as the general manager of that organisation they contributed hugely to the smooth running. So in many ways I think this is business as usual, it's a reallocation of resources and I welcome the report too and I support Councillor Antic's motion. Councillor? Uh, yes, thank you Lord Mayor and uh, some good points in there, look you're quite right, um, it might well be that there are uh, there was only a couple of points targeting there, but it might be a whole range of uh, matters that might be addressed. It might be a you know, green wall that needs watering or an air conditioner that's ruining our carbon neutral targets. It could be anything on the it could be anything. So uh, it's good to have people on, on the ground and hopefully the report will cover all of those uh, those items. And um, I, uh, I, uh, I think uh, just, no, I just put the support. Members, ignoring the comments about green walls, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Thank you, Members. Thank you, Councillor Antti. Uh, members, I now take you on to item 16, which is motions without notice. <coughs> Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, 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 Councillor, could you please read that for the benefit of your fellow elected members? Uh, so, just the, the words such as crop ratio, uh, just put that down, please. So I'm excluding that from the Just put that down. So the motion is that the administration, just leave it as I can talk to that, is that administration provide a report on the planning and development initiatives effectively utilised by the City of Sydney to protect and improve historic streetscapes and historic heritage buildings and their successful incorporation into new CBD developments. And uh, uh, the purpose of the motion is I've left out those specifics such as plot ratio, transfer of the floor area, tower setbacks, that is going to be signed to the buildings that they're utilising. Councillor, before I accept this motion without notice or otherwise, can I just look to our CEO? Um, is this, do we have any other pre-existing motions which would already adequately cover the matters brought to the table by Councillor Wilkinson or is this um, uh, a, new, a genuine new initiative which is uh, yet to be reported on. Can I just ask that question please, Councillor, of the Administration before we proceed? Yes, yeah, thanks, Claire. Um, through the presiding mem uh, member, for um, a lot of our advice we do look to our um, 
capital city councils to see what they are doing. I can't imagine it would be hugely onerous for the team to pull something together in relation to those elements. So I'm happy to um, yeah, uh, progress that. Councillor Wilkinson, just with that in mind, I would genuinely suggest that I would encourage you to put a motion such as this on notice. Is there any urgency associated with this matter? Um, well, the, uh, uh, the, mat the uh, suggestion came from uh, Councillor Hender for, for, further to my verbal report on my visit to the City of Sydney, and it's not one that involves a direct financial uh, impl implication, which is the reason for putting things on motion, so I don't see any reason why this would need to be put on motion, on notice. Okay, Councillor, not, not casting judgment on the motion at all, I think the motion's got absolute merit, but I'm going to encourage you to put this on, my, on, on, my, on notice in two weeks' time. Please. Oh, so be it. Thank you, Councillor. We look forward to debating it in two weeks' time. Members, do I have any further motions without notice? And motive, can I just reiterate, members, with regards to motions on notice, it really does bear upon some sense of time urgency or extraneous circumstances which would require to be brought before the council with a sense of uh, expediency. So it's a good motion, councillor, but we look forward to debating it on notice in two weeks' time. Members, I will take you on in that case. Now that would then, I think, look after all of the matters prior to Item 17, which is exclusions to the public. Now, members, we now have four items which we will be debating uh, in confidence. The first item which we'll be debating in confidence, members, is the matter which was brought to your attention by Councillor Hender. So could I please have a uh, mover, please, to move that matter regarding the Adelaide Central Market into confidence. Moved by Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Abiyad. Any debate? I'll put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry that item. So members, I'm going to change the numbering. That will now become 18.1.1. 18.1.2 will become your Adelaide City Council Audit Committee matter in confidence. Can I have a mover please? Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. Any debate? I'll put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. 18.2.1 uh, becomes 18.2.2, strategic procurement matter. Oh, it doesn't matter, no, you're right, sorry. Numbering will remain the same, 18.2.1. Can I have a mover to move that matter into confidence, please, members? Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. I'll put that before you, those in favour? Those against, we carry. And finally, members, 18.2.2, lease Rundle Street matter. Can I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Hender. I'll put that before you, those in favour. Those against, we carry. So members, we have four items in confidence. Can I please ask any members of the gallery who are not associated with those four matters to please vamos.
Members, the meeting is now back in public, so I will formally declare it closed at 7.37 p.m. on Tuesday, the 24th of April. Members, please do endeavour to attend as many Anzac Day commemorations as you can, and uh, thank you for your contribution. And of course, on Friday, we have the Colonel William Light event, which I look forward to seeing all members at. Thank you, members. Meeting closed.